Missed me? I missed you too. Today we're improving the Mario project. This is part 2, so if you haven't watched the first part then... What are you doing here? Anyway, let's go. The first thing we're gonna add is brick breaking. And for that we need to change the map collision function. Instead of checking the collision based on the coordinates, we're gonna check it based on the given hitbox. This will be super useful later on. And since the hitboxes can be large now, the function will return a vector of binary representations of all the collisions in one row. We also need to change Mario's collision code so instead of using bitwise operators, we're gonna use lambda functions. Let's see. Um, you okay dude? Okay, it turns out we need to make this short and add the seal function over here. And now it's perfectly working. Before we destroy the bricks, we've got to know which bricks to destroy exactly so I added this vector which will store the coordinates of the cells intersecting the given hitbox. And here we're adding the coordinates of a collided cell in that vector. Now we just need to set the brick cells to be empty when Mario collides with them from the bottom. Let's see. Oh yeah. But we all know that small Mario can't break bricks. Only big Mario can do that. So let's add him to the game. First we need to draw the mushroom that will make him big. That wasn't so hard. Now we need to make the mushroom appear when we hit the question block. We're just gonna do the same thing we did with bricks but instead of setting the cell to be empty, we're gonna set it to be an activated question block. And now when we hit the question block, oh yeah I forgot about the texture. We also need to add collision. Thankfully our map texture had one empty space left. Now we just need to add that texture to our code. We also need to add the activated question block to our list of cells to check. Ok it should work. Screw everything. I'm the mushroom now. Ok it turns out I forgot to add the collision checking here, here and here. And now it's working. Now for the mushrooms I made a new class. For now we're just gonna draw them on the screen. We're gonna store the mushrooms in the Mario class since Mario is the only one who needs them. After we hit the question block, we're gonna add one mushroom to the vector. There we go. Now let's make it move. After we hit the question block, the mushroom will appear and start moving upwards. Once it's above the question block, it's gonna move the same way the Goombas move. Turning that into a code wasn't that hard. We're gonna store the starting y coordinate of the mushroom and use it to check if the mushroom is above the question block. Once that's true, we're gonna change that variable to be the bottom of the map. I know this is a goofy thing to do, I'm just too lazy to find a better solution. The important thing is it works. Now let's make it appear behind the question block so that it looks like it's coming from inside of it. Since we're drawing mushrooms in the Mario class and Mario should be drawn above everything else, I made a separate function that draws the mushrooms. And now we're drawing mushrooms before drawing the map. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And that's not what I'm talking about. Since we're drawing all of the tiles in one function, we need to separate them too. And I did that by adding one boolean argument. And now it's fixed. It's time we make Mario big. First I added a new variable for that. And based on that variable, Mario will have a different hitbox. Once Mario touches a mushroom, we're gonna make him big and delete that mushroom. And now when we eat a mushroom, we have a bigger hitbox. This looks kinda weird. Anyway, now we need to make sure that when Big Mario touches a Goomba, Mario will become small instead of dying. I just added this condition in Mario's die function. Let's see. Uh huh. The reason it's not working is because when a Goomba touches Big Mario, Mario becomes small. Then in the next frame, Goomba touches small Mario which is all since Mario's death. The fix is Mario needs to become invincible for a short period of time after becoming small. When the invincibility timer is greater than zero, Mario won't die. And while Mario is invincible, we'll make his sprite blink to let the player know that. Alright, let's see. There we go. While I was testing this, I noticed this bug. That's because we're calling the die function when Mario falls off the map which results in Mario becoming invincible. And to fix that, I added an instant death argument which will immediately kill Mario when set to true. Well that was easy. Now let's draw a big Mario. Big Mario needs to look big and intimidating so that when Goombas see him they'll be like Oh my god, he's too big, let's get out of here. And I did just that. Here he is, Big Mario. Look I don't know about you but if I see a short man with long legs I'd be terrified as hell. Especially if they're walking like this. I think the big version of Mario is super easy. We just need to add a bunch of conditions in the draw function. Let's see. This looks funny as hell. Now let's add crouching. First I drew this crouching Mario. Then I added the crouching variable. Mario will have a small hitbox when he's crouching. And here we're drawing the crouching Mario. Let's see. Um, since we're changing the y coordinate when crouching and I forgot to add an extra condition, Mario kept going downwards. 
Let's see. Yes. All right, there seems to be word. King. Okay, after we release the crouch key, we need to check the collision on top of us before standing up. That was easy to fix. Ra ra Rasputin, lover of the Russian queen. Okay, the last thing we need to add is the growing animation. We're just gonna do the same thing we did with invincibility. Also, Mario will become invincible while growing. Perfect. Now we're gonna add Koopas. Um, he looks too friendly. There we go. Since we're adding another enemy, I think it's time I do something I've never done before, which is inheritance. Yay! I made an enemy class which will have functions and variables that every enemy needs. Then both Goomba and Koopa classes will inherit those functions and variables from the enemy class. As you can see, the Koopa class doesn't have the die function, yet we still can call it because we inherited that function from the enemy class. Same thing applies to variables. This is gonna make things a lot easier, at least that's what they told me. The reason we did this is because we need to store both Goombas and Koopas in one vector. As you can see, the enemy's vector consists of enemy pointers. And now when we call a function using our pointers, it's gonna call different functions based on the object the pointer is pointing to. This is called polymorphism. Yeah. Now it may seem like it's working, but watch what happens if we restart the game multiple times. It's pretty obvious we have a memory leak. The reason we're having a memory leak is because when we're clearing our vector, we're deleting the pointers. But we're not deleting the objects these pointers are pointing to. So when we restart the game, we're adding new objects but not deleting the old ones. We can fix this by using the delete keyword. And now when we press restart... Um... This is not supposed to happen. After I couldn't figure out why it wasn't working, I asked other programmers for help. And you know what they told me? Ew, are you still using the old pointers? Oh my god, what is wrong with her? Yeah, stay away from us, weirdo. So apparently there's a thing called smart pointers that are smart enough to do everything for you. There are three types of smart pointers, but we're gonna focus on one of them, which is shared pointers. Here's how it works. Let's imagine a shared pointer that's pointing to a certain object. We can add more pointers if we want to. If we delete one of them, nothing will change. But if we remove all of them, the last pointer will automatically delete the object before being deleted. Adding smart pointers was a bit of a headache, but I did it. Let's restart the game. Oh, thank god. I think we can finally start working on Koopa. Koopa has three states. Walking, staying inside of his shell, and sliding while being inside of his shell. Koopa will switch between states when Mario jumps on top of him. Come here, Koopa. Oh yeah, I forgot to stop him. But why is Mario dying? It turns out Mario kept intersecting Koopa for a few frames after jumping on him. But since Mario slightly bounces after jumping, Koopa assumed Mario didn't jump on him and instead just touched him so he killed Mario. To fix this, I added a check collision variable. Once Mario collides with Koopa, we'll run the collision program and set that variable to be false. And when Mario stops colliding, we're gonna set it back to being true. That way we'll run the collision program only once. Here's how it looks in the code. Let's see. Perfect. Now we need to make Koopa kill other enemies. I drew the express which we'll use when enemies die from Koopa's shell. Then I added the death type argument to the enemies die function. Enemies will change their sprite and bounce off when they touch Koopa's shell. Let's try killing Goomba. Good. Now let's try killing Koopa. This is one of those bugs which you don't want to fix. But we have to. So let's add this here, here, and here. And now it works. The only thing left to add is Koopa getting out of his shell. Koopa now has a get out timer which will start as soon as Koopa gets inside of his shell. And once that timer reaches zero, Koopa will get out of his shell and start walking again. But before that, we're gonna play the getting out animation. Okay, it should work. Alright, it's about to happen. I'm free! I'm finally free! Okay, the Koopas are done. Now we're gonna work on the next level. Here's a sketch of the next level. Thankfully, it doesn't have any background tiles. I also added this little dot in the sketch of the first level, which will define the level finish. We're gonna store that dot's position in this variable. And once Mario crosses that position, we're gonna reset everything and load the next level. Let's see. Oh yeah. Um, well, let me just... Go, 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 sit. How do I get out now? Okay, let's fix this bug first. Let's see if it works. Excellent. Now we're gonna work on the map. First we're gonna change the background color so I decided that this pixel at the corner should define that. 
Here we're getting the color of that pixel, and here we're setting that color to be the background color. That was easy, but while I was testing it, I noticed this bug. It turns out I forgot to add vertical collision checking between enemies. Well, I didn't exactly forget, I just didn't bother. Anyway, now it's fixed. I also added blocks instead of moving platforms because I'm too stupid for that. Now let's change the tile set for the underground level. I drew the underground versions of tiles and put them two cells under regular ones. This'll make things a lot easier. Then I made some changes to the draw map function. Let's test it. Um, this is not what I was expecting. After analyzing the code and cursing the person who wrote it, I think I fixed the problem. There we go. This looks amazing. Now let's do the same thing with the enemies. The enemies now have an underground variable, and we're gonna change their texture based on its value. Alright. Now that we finished with this... Oh, right. I completely forgot about this. You know, before fixing this bug, I had one color representing a pipe. But now I have three colors. And it looks something like this. At least it's working, so I'm not gonna complain. Now let's add coins because this is wrong. Since I like to keep things organized, I decided to make a map manager class and store everything related to maps in it. This meant I had to rewrite the whole project. And was it worth it? Hell no! Okay, it's time for an advanced debugging technique. So it's printing beep 1 but not printing beep 2. So this line is causing the problem. And after some more debugging, I realized that I had to do this. As always, the console printing saves the day. Now let's get back to coins. I drew this rotating coin because that's what coins do. I think. First we're gonna add coins to the map so I added this pixels to our sketch. Since we need to update the coin animation, I had to make an update function just for this. I also made Mario collect those coins when they touch them. Here are the coins. Now how do I get to them? Oh. Oh. Oh yeah, I'm rich! Now to add coins to the question blocks, I changed their color in the map sketch. Then I made a struct for the coin particle. We're gonna add either a mushroom or a coin particle based on the pixel color. Let's see. I know this is completely useless, but it still looks cool. I also did a glowing animation for the question blocks to make them look more interesting. Now the last thing we need to add is brick breaking particles, so I made a vector for that. We're gonna do the same thing we did with coin particles. I think adding 4 particles is enough for us. After some trial and error, I found the pattern I was looking for. And that's it! We're done! I think we did a good job here. The code is in the description. Big thanks to all my awesome Patreon supporters. And thank you for watching. Don't forget to join our Discord server where you can talk with amazing people, including me. And be sure to like and subscribe. Now let me tell you about...